good segue because our topic is going to be Excel tables. On well, the topic that Zach is writing about, the reason you want to talk about these is that they are perhaps one of the most um, underused and misunderstood functionalities and features in Excel. Um, I know that from my personal experience, I was making dynamic ranges with formulas thinking there is no other way to do this. And then someone on a LinkedIn forum, so this wasn't even that long ago, uh, pointed me to the fact that you could do, uh, that uh, tables have dynamic um, ranges built in that you refer to the column. And so I had limited experience with tables. When they first said tables, I got them confused with the data tables that are in the scenario manager. So. Um, I think there's still some people confused. I know that some people will still refer to them as lists, whom I talk to. I hope not, because they are tables now. That was a 2003 feature, as John Peltier pointed out in the comments. So um, without further ado, let's talk about tables. I'll start with you, Zach. Give us the lowdown. So uh, yeah, so Bill has maybe uh, refine my uh, speech on tables a little bit. Uh, he said I get, I get a little long-winded. So tables are. Tables are just, they're little workhorses, right? They're little bombshells uh, in Excel that, that force you to do certain things and prevent you from doing other things. And I think mostly those, that's, a, that's a good thing. So there's, there's certain rules with tables and, um, you know, added benefit. Um, uh, you get added benefits that come along with them as well. So it's, the, I think the best part about tables is they force you to have structured data, right? You, you're allowed one header row. Uh, you have to have unique headers. Uh, you can't have any formulas in, in header cells. Uh, you know, you get one total row. So you know, you don't you don't get this hodgepodge of, of mess from a, uh, someone's Excel file where they have, you know, multiple uh, duplicate column headers. Uh, they have multiple rows for column headers. You know, you're not sure where the header row starts, where it ends, where the data starts. You know, you have a very very structured data. It's dynamic, like with the name ranges that you were talking about, Jordan. Um, you know those named ranges stay dynamic. They're they're unchangeable uh, in you know the back end of Excel. Uh, and while you can't use um, well, you can't use like a, a table column name in uh, you know data validation. You can use a named range for a column in data validation. And that's one way that I do. In fact, I do all my my drop down lists uh, from named ranges that point to a, a table column. Because it's the the name range always stays dynamic if you use the structured reference line, um, you know. And there are certain pitfalls too, though, like uh, using absolute referencing in a calculated column in a table uh, will just get you all sorts of screwed up. Um, there are definitely workarounds. Um, like the the prime example is like a running total in Excel, right? Can I do an example on my screen? Sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. Screen share. Um, all right. Tell you, when I found out about these, I was so embarrassed about all of these. I, I built dashboards that had all these formulas, formulas everywhere. And um, when I found out about tables, it allowed the charts to be dynamic, the summaries to be dynamic without having to say, uh, use an entire column as a reference in a formula. No, just have a reference a column in a table. And that made things so much easier and it had higher integrity. So, um, I don't, can you guys see my screen? Yep, yep. I can see your okay, screen. Cool. So, this is just, you know, very simple example, right? So. Control T or Control L to create table. So I'm just going to name it. You know, it's days a week, right? I'm just going to do a simple data validation drop down uh, that gives me the the day of the week. So I'll have um, day, day to one, day to two. Right. So when you Try to add data validation. With a list. And you use a little ref editor tool. You know, it, you see it puts in standard cell referencing, right? Mm -hmm. And you can click OK and that'll work. 
if you try and say um, weekdays weekday, right, in structured referencing, you can see it doesn't work. You get an error. But if I select that and I use um, uh, where is it? Control F3 to get to the name manager, or you can do it from the formulas tab. New, say weekday, and you can see that what it refers to is the, the structured reference, right? And you can't name it the same, so I can't say weekdays because weekdays is a reserved name now because it's the name of the table. So now weekdays is named range. Now in my destination table, select data validation equals weekday from a list. And then my drop down then has everything from that list. And the great thing about this is, you know, let's say, uh, let's say I forgot a day, right? I don't have Saturday on there. My drop down list, Saturday's gone. So it's, it's dynamic to what is taken away or added to. If I add Saturday back, and then it's back in my data validation drop down list. So it's a nice way to keep a, you know, a nice, unique list that's dynamic for your data validation drop downs. Yep. But now you are showing one of the pitfalls there of what if you, okay, so you're table goes down to D4, four, row number four. So now, if I have to want to add data to row five, right. and I want to force the user to use the drop-down list, you can't do that with a table. Right, right. So there's, there's, there's two workarounds to that. So, like you see, I click here in, in B5, or D5, and there's nothing, because the table goes to, to row four. So, there, let me let me say this. There is there is no immediate workaround to that, right? So there's there's two semi workarounds. So I use Control D to fill down when I'm in the first blank row below a table, mm -hmm. and that will will auto fill down and thus expand the table range, and that will then give me one more table row, which includes the data validation, will include any calculations in the calculated columns, uh, etc. Right? Right. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go into the last bottom rightmost cell and hit tab, and it will insert a new row. Basically, the bottom line is you have to insert a table row into the table to, to have that. Now, right. if you wanted to, you could select every cell in that column, right, mm -hmm. and, and add the same thing. So when I'm in a cell below the, the, the table, you have the, the data validation. And when it changes, it includes in that in the table row. The downside is if you skip a row, so I've, I've skipped the row, there's another blank row, I'll choose something from my data validation list, you see the table didn't expand because there's a blank row in between. Right. And then when I go back in that blank cell and I, and I go and, and change it, while it'll include that row, the next row down isn't changed, so I've got to either hit F2 to enter edit mode or click in the formula bar, double click the cell, hit enter, and then it will be included in the table. Or, so it's, or, or grab that lower right column, uh, lower, lower right corner, and drag it. That yeah, grab that sizing handle and drag it down. And you can do it from the the design tab as well. Just click resize table and then just manually yeah. type in your range if you want, or select it and then click OK. So yeah, it, it, there's no good answer to it. You right. Know, it, it's some kind of fudging around, but yeah. And that, that, yeah, but, I'm yeah, sorry, I was going to say, um, Zach, so, you know, especially while you have that up right now, um, could you could you talk about maybe uh, what are some of the gotchas? So as people go into tables, are, as you're writing this book, are there things that are, are that are that are gotchas or, or, or limitations that they should know about going into tables? Yeah, definitely. No, there's some definite drawbacks. Um, so one of them is, is a somewhat well-known bug of using the subtotal function. Um, so I'm just going to add here. I'm just going to add a couple calculations here. All right, so I'll get a row number. Um, so 
there's two ways to get uh, you know the table row number use you know row number a1 or the row number of the actual table is taking the row minus the row of the header um, and so if you wanted to use uh, the subtotal function uh, let's see one And I know this doesn't actually mean anything, but so I've got the subtotal function in here, right? And it's in a calculated column, and that's this is basically a, a no-no. You don't ever really want to do that, right? Uh, so the bug is basically with subtotal calculation in a calculated column, and this can happen without tables too, I believe. Uh, every time you filter the data, so I'll filter out Fridays, and if you take a look at the row headers, you see the, the blue row headers shows you the filtered range, right? So first thing to notice is there's an excluded row. That bottom row, which is included in the table, the row header is, is uh, you know, dark gray or, or black text, right? It's not blue. So that means it's not included in the filter range. So I'll clear the filter. filter again and then you can see there's even more rows with black text that are not included in the, in the filter range and every time you do this more rows are excluded from the filter range every single time until you um, close Excel and then reopen it. Then you can see there's only two rows well three rows in the filter range, right? one, one row is filtered out. Huh. So that that's probably one of the one of the biggest bugs, um, and this one didn't even unhide. So and and that's because of the the subtotal function as a calculated column uh, in the table itself. So which is funny because if you add a total row, their functions by default when you select this this drop down handle and select one of the functions gives you uses the subtotal function. So it all, tables always use the subtotal function in the total row, which you can change if you want, um, you know, depending on what you want to see, obviously. So basically, one of the biggest pitfalls you want to stay away from is using a subtotal function in a calculated column, and definitely find a workaround for that. Um, cool. Uh, probably another big one is if you if you're on a protected sheet, um, you, you can't sort a table on a protected sheet, even if you allow the sorting. So if, if I right click on the sheet and I say protect sheet and I say uh, so sort to allow sort and click OK I can't even select this this drop down right. So you can't you can't sort a table on a protected sheet. The only workaround to this and it's it's kind of a crummy workaround is you actually have to uh, unprotect the data body range and the header, so you have to unlock those cells. So you know, Control One or you know, right-click Format Cells and unlock those cells, mm -hmm. which they're now all unlocked, which kind of prevents the the purpose of protecting a sheet. But mm. protecting a sheet, sorting, yeah. That yeah, there's a you can't you partially protect a table. So you know, right. I've had situations where one of the columns has some really complex formula, um, but the users do need to input data in other parts of the table. I can't protect the one column with the complex formula. Right. Yeah, no, you'd have to need you have to use uh, VDA or some sort of workaround for that. Yeah, and, but and yeah. I've seen I've seen some of the workarounds for that, and it's clear that they're workarounds. Um, but we're not showing some of the more powerful things about tables, and some of that is say tying a pivot table to a table, so that you can add data all the live long day, and then just go back and refresh your pivot table, and it's absorbed the new data. Right, and the and the old way of doing that was to use named ranges, right? To either use um, 
you know, some sort of index match combination or an offset uh, formula to give you something, a named range that will actually return a, a range object, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, the benefit of being able to use tables is, is not only do you not have to worry about setting up those complex formulas, but you can now have data below or and or to the right of your data, which because normally what you would do is you would say look for the last cell of data in this in this range or this entire column, and that precluded you from putting data below that that data table, right? So now the benefit of a side benefit of using tables is that you don't have to worry about that anymore because no matter where a, a table grows or shrinks to, you have that that table named range. That is is named by default uh, as the the data source. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I tell you, the tables, and, and then you take it a step further, and then start talking about data models. Now you really got something. Yeah, they're they're tied into everything, and yeah, uh, you know that. I, I guess to to give the book a little bit of a plug, so. The the book does cover a lot of that. So the the whole idea of the book, I guess, was to to not to give you every situation, but to give you the you know the the basics of basically everything that tables touch, right? So so there's a big portion of the book on um, you know external data. Um, there's a, a section in there about BI and you know how tables interact with the, the data model, mm -hmm. uh, with linked tables. Uh, how to use them with Power Query because Power Query does some funky stuff with tables and and gives you some funky table styles, um, you know, and, and things like that. And you know, and goes over the reason why you can't um, insert a table onto imported data from a text file, which is a kind of a pain in the butt. But, but if you insert a table on on imported text file data that still has a connection, it'll break the connection. It's kind of a, a pain, but it, there's good reasoning behind it. So, but yeah, right. tables tables are are into everything and like. I don't remember which one of you guys said it, but the the one percenters, yeah, and that's the number that was quoted to me uh, by Microsoft when I went and asked them. You know, I said, you know, how many people actually use tables because they do they do search analytics all the time, and and you know, given that it is it is Microsoft search analytics and it's not perfect, they gave me the the number of less than one percent. Mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't even quantify it to to a single whole number <laughs> percentage. So uh, less than one percent of, of Excel users use tables, and, and that's, that's a sad, sad thing. It makes me yeah. want to just drop my head in my hands and cry. <laughs> but, uh, well, that's sad, Oz. Uh, so I, I, I want to give. Um, so first off, I was I was uh, I was thrilled that the very first tip that ever came from this show from Oz was around tables, and and. Um, Zach, I want to give you a chance to be able to to, to flip yourself back to uh, to, oh, yeah. to show your face instead of the book. But if you, you can see my desktop right now, you can see the Excel Tables book on Amazon. You know, the Excel Tables a Complete Guide for Creating, Using, and Automating uh, Lists and Tables is the book that Zach's talking about that will be coming out uh, shortly. And and with that, Oz, I think this is a great segue for you to kind of come in and talk about our, our tip section of the week. <laughs> 